you for tuning in to Workshop for the Soul. Let's get right to it. It's been a minute since we've uh, since I've come before you, so uh, let's uh, let's get right in the Word. Let's pray, dear Heavenly Father, Lord God. Thank you for the time and the opportunity in which you've given us to be able to freely worship you, dear Lord, in spirit and within truth. So I ask that you show mercy upon those who this message comes across, dear Father. Help me, dear Lord, as I deliver, dear Father. Keep me air free from all. All technical difficulties, dear Lord, that may try to approach in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So the name of this one, it's a little different. You know, the world doesn't need another prosperity preacher. But don't nobody like to be broke. All right. So here's the thought. Um, I want to title this one, What's Your Level of Faithfulness? All right. Not anybody else's, your specific level of faithfulness. And I want to go to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20. It says, a faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. And if you think about that, you know, if you rush into be rich, or if you shortcut your way to be rich, then you won't be innocent. All right? You're probably not times you're going to end up hurting somebody along the way or after you get them. Right? But Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings. And your level, that shows you right there, your level of faithfulness is direct, directly related to your blessing. Your level of faithfulness holds your blessing, and mine's as well, all right? So let's go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 45. Remember, the thought is, what's your specific level of faithfulness? The thought is, what's your level of faithfulness? So let's go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 45, all right? And see what, see what it says further. It says, who then is faithful and wise? Who then is a faithful and wise servant, right? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Who his Lord has made him ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Your increase can be determined by you and only you. Understand that, right? So step one. Find out, I want to make sure I get this correct. Find out where you are most, most spiritually faithful in. Find out what areas of your life you're most spiritually faithful in, right? Step two is search your heart and find out where you're the least spiritually faithful in. All right. Then, then apply those things. Uh, 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 you want to find out what you're most naturally faithful in. And what you're most naturally unfaithful in, right? Hold your, and step three is hold your spirit and your flesh accountable to a timetable. Okay? Most of us can't monitor progress because we don't hold ourselves accountable to a timetable. That could be an hourly timetable. Right? That could be a daily timetable. Well, in two weeks, I want to make sure I'm honed in on these things. And step number four is don't put, don't place that same timetable on God. And that goes like, well, Lord, if you don't bless me to get over this in two weeks, I'm on, what you going to do? Don't swear about nothing. All right. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. All right. And we're going to go down to verse number, it's verse number 10. I'm trying to read this one right quick. It says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in least is unjust also in much. The Bible says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. 
The Bible says also, one sinner destroyeth much good. But whatever you are the least faithful in, you have to be honest with yourself and know that you are the least faithful also in much. Okay, there's only, and so if you look at it, uh, in the last icebergs, you got the tip of the iceberg hanging out the water, right? But you got the whole state of Texas underneath it. That's what your level of unfaithfulness is like concerning particular issues. So if you are unfaithful in that area, just a little bit, right? I'm talking about, we're talking about uh, you're unfaithful in the area the size of a car. But underneath that unfaithfulness is the whole state of Rhode Island. So these are things, these are faults you need to correct. Because eventually, these icebergs, they do spin, they tilt. And the smaller end could be at the bottom. And now everybody see the whole, your whole state of Rhode Island because you didn't hold yourself to a timetable, find out what you were least faithful in, and be honest with yourself and hold yourself accountable according to. According to. All right? Let's go to Luke Chapter 16, verse 12. And it says, And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Well, naturally speaking, if you have not been faithful with six, your $60,000 job, how can you be faithful with a $120,000 job? Be a good Humble steward with your increase. Be a faithful, humble steward with your increase. And you shall be increased. Be faithful over a little. So God can give you more. Okay? In your level of faithfulness, hold your blessings. All right? If you suffer from the spirit of slackness, which most of us are slack concerning some things, well, underneath those some things that we're slack on, there's a whole mountain of stuff underneath it. It's only because you lack faith for your situation. So I want to repeat that. If you suffer from spirit from the spirit of slackness. I don't want to call that laziness. I don't, if you suffer from the spirit of slackness, it's only because you lack faith for your situation. If you had the faith for what you were slack in, you would not be slack in. It's as simple as that. You would wholeheartedly dig in to whatever you, you know, or slackness is become the event that that approaches your life only because you've forgotten areas in which you need to be faithful in. All because they have not been a problem to you. But the minute you get tired, the minute you get hungry, the minute you get frustrated, the minute you get lonely, the minute you get mad, the minute you're overly happy about something, the minute you're overly anxious of something, the area in which you were dealing slackness with exposes itself. And it might not expose itself as the whole state of Rhode Island, the whole state of Texas. It might just expose itself as a needle. But you got a whole ball of yarn underneath it. Hope my analogies suffice. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians, right? Chapter, I want to say 4. 1 Corinthians, chapter 4. And let's drop down to verse 2. I'm just going to read this here. It says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Kind of knew that off the hand already. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. 
Are we not stewards of Christ? 2 Thessalonians. I'm going to wrap this up here. This thought wasn't too long, but it's sufficient. 2 Thessalonians. Let's go to chapter 3. Let's go to verse 3. All right. It says, But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and keep you from evil. Isn't, isn't being kept from evil a blessing? But what keeps you away from evil is your level of faithfulness concerning an issue that you may have a fault in. See, your level of faithfulness is directly related. There is mercy, sure. But you can increase the amount of mercy. You can, you can absolutely miss things that are coming your way by increasing your level of faithfulness which increases your level of blessings. But God is faithful. Even when we're not faithful, he's still faithful. But can you imagine increasing your level of faithfulness, the reward for it? Keeping you from evil is, a, is enough, minus the tangible blessings. Keeping you from evil allows you to stay focused, for you to focus on what you need to focus on to get what you want. That's my thought. Examine your level of faithfulness and be honest with yourself. Hold your spirit and flesh accountable to some type of timetable and monitor it. The Bible says, hold on, let me get this right. The Bible says, happy is the man who passes over his transgression. Happy is he who passes over his transgressions. It's going to make you feel good to pass it up. That'll be it. That's Workshop for the Soul. Thank you for tuning in to the channel. Appreciate it very much.